This video will demonstrate how to control a plane wave mount and follow a satellite using the HTTP server interface to PWI4 and the sample Python code that is provided. Whenever plane wave interface 4 or PWI4 is running, it is hosting an internal HTTP server that you can access using a standard web browser. If you navigate to localhost colon 8220, you'll get back a page that just says PWI4 server. If you add slash status to the end of that URL, you'll get back some basic status information about the state of PWI4 at the current time. You can also issue simple commands such as slash mount slash connect, and that will instruct PWI4 to connect to the physical mount. It's equivalent to clicking the connect button in the user interface. Similarly, you can say slash mount slash disconnect, and that will disconnect from the hardware. You can construct these URLs as needed, but PlaneWave has provided some sample code in Python called PWI4Client that wraps all of the current commands and parses the current set of status information. You're free to adapt this code to your programming language of, of choice or use it directly. There's also a sample script called follow TLE offset demo, which demonstrates some of the features, specifically how to connect to the mount, enable the motors, follow a satellite using its TLE information, and perform offsets relative to the tracking of that satellite. Let's look at that script now. The first thing we do is import the PWI4 object from the PWI4 client module. This is some boilerplate code that allows us to work with both Python 2 and Python 3. This is just going to be a function that allows the that waits until the user has pressed enter on their keyboard. Next, we connect to PWI4 and we issue some commands to make sure that the mount is connected and that both the azimuth and altitude motors are enabled. Down here, I have a few sample TLE entries taken from the Celestrack website. Uh, today is May 9th, 2020, and so the TLE information is current as of right now, but this TLE information will become increasingly inaccurate the farther you are from the current date. So I highly recommend that you update this from the original source or provide your own TLE information as needed. I've selected three different geosynchronous satellites for this example, and I've selected them to be visible from different parts of the Earth. So for example, the first satellite, RSAT2, is in geosynchronous orbit here above North and South America. So if you're running your script on a, on a telescope that's located on the side of Earth, you should be able to see this particular satellite pretty much any time. Similarly, the second satellite is one that should be visible from Europe and Africa. It's located here above those continents. And the third sample satellite is located over here and should be visible from Australia and Asia. Once you've uncommented the satellite TLE elements that you want to try following, down here, we select those, uh, the appropriate TLE and we wait for the user to press enter to begin saluting to this TLE. So let's begin running the script and watch this happen. Down here, I have a simulated eyepiece that shows what the telescope would be looking at right now. And if I say Python follow TLE to offset demo, we see that it connected to the mount. It enabled both motors and now it's waiting for us to press enter. We press enter and we begin slewing to the satellite's current location. We see here that we're repeatedly querying the distance each axis is from its desired target. And once we're within a couple arc seconds, we assume that we've arrived at the target. And indeed, here's the satellite that's moving relative to the background stars. Next, we can press enter to demonstrate some of the offset features available in PWI4. There are, there's a concept of native axis offsets, which is uh, axis zero and axis one. These are the actual mechanical axes on the mount, which would be azimuth and altitude in an altaz mount. And they would roughly be RA and DEC in an equatorial mount, uh, not accounting for polar misalignment. So the nice thing about this coordinate system for tracking satellites is that as long as you don't rotate your camera, the orientation of this coordinate system should be the same at all times. So in this example, I have my camera oriented so that the azimuth axis is left-right 
and the altitude axis is up down. So if we perform a 20 arc second offset in axis zero, we see the satellite moves 20 arc seconds to the left. And similarly, if we do a 20 arc second offset in axis one, it moves in the up down direction. These coordinates are nice for things like centering your satellite or for guiding on the satellite. The next thing I want to point out is that you can issue both of these offsets simultaneously. So if we do an additional 20 arc seconds in both directions, we see that our satellite ends up in this diagonal offset from where we started. These offsets are internally accumulating, and it's possible to reset those accumulated offsets to zero to get back where you started. And it's also possible to work in other coordinate systems. Another system that's available is RA deck. You can see from the indicator here that at this particular location in the sky, declination is oriented in this direction and right ascension is oriented in that direction. So if we perform a 20 arc second offset in deck, the telescope is now tracking a point that is 20 arc seconds to the north of our intended target. Similarly, we can offset in right ascension and get a move in the perpendicular direction. Finally, I want to point out that it's possible to perform a rate offset in any of these coordinates as well. So for example, if you want to continuously track an additional five arc seconds per second along axis one relative to the baseline coordinates of your satellite, you can do that as well. And you see that we are tracking a point that is creeping five arc seconds per second away from the satellite at the uh, specified rate. Finally, we can issue a command to stop any accumulated rate offsets. And then finally, we can stop the mount altogether. For a geosynchronous satellite, stopping the mount altogether is very similar to tracking the satellite. But if you were tracking a low Earth orbit or LEO satellite, you would see that it actually goes from moving very quickly to stopping. I chose a geosynchronous satellite for this demo just because they should always be visible, whereas any particular LEO is only going to be visible you know, a, a very brief fraction every month or may never be visible from a particular site. So the geosynchronous satellites are easy ones to start with, but all of this code should work equally well with a low Earth orbit satellite as well. If you have any questions, please contact Plane Wave Instruments.